What would have been the beginning, if not the Big Bang? Have we got unmistakable scientific proof for more than 50 years that the hot Big Bang created the universe as we know it today? In the past, the universe was smaller, hotter, denser, and more uniform. Today, it's expanding, cooling, and full of clumps, such planets, stars, and galaxies. You can imagine that everything that exists today was once condensed into a single point, or singularity, which signifies the beginning of space and time itself, if you extend all the way back to the earliest moments that are conceivable. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at NASA's new discovery that will prove that the Big Bang Theory is not the beginning. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. And let's get started. Our knowledge of how the universe functions is always subject to revision in the face of new data if there is one aspect of science that cannot be denied. We must be open to altering our conceptual representation of the cosmos whenever new experimental or observational data challenges our understanding of reality. This includes the laws it operates under, the physical components of a system, and how it evolved from its starting conditions to the present. Since the beginning of the 20th century, this has occurred on several occasions, and as our understanding of the universe has advanced, so too have the words we use to describe it. However, there will always be individuals who refuse to accept that these changes have taken place and adhere to the outdated definitions, much like linguistic prescriptivists. The evolution of scientific terms, however, must take into account our current understanding of reality in contrast to the evolution of colloquial language, which is mainly arbitrary. The Big Bang is the first thing that comes to mind when we discuss the creation of our universe, but since the scientific theory proposing that our universe ever had a genesis was initially advanced, our knowledge of our cosmic origins has advanced greatly. Here's how to clear up the misconception and enlighten you on the differences between what the Big Bang initially meant and what it means now. It took almost 20 years for the concept to be initially described before the phrase the Big Bang was ever used. In reality, Fred Hoyle, a fervent supporter of the competing theory of the steady-state cosmology, is one of the theory's strongest critics, and the phrase itself is a product of his work. He made an appearance on BBC Radio in 1949 to promote what he called the perfect cosmological principle, the idea that the universe is homogeneous in both space and time, meaning that any observer, anywhere in the world, at any moment, would view the universe to be in the same cosmic shape. The opposing explanation, which he subsequently labelled irrational and claimed to be beyond science, was derided as a hypothesis that all matter of the universe was produced in one big bang at a particular time in the distant past, he continued. However, the concept wasn't initially limited to the notion that the entire universe's substance was produced at a single instant in the finite past. Hoyle mocked the idea, but it had already changed from what it originally meant. Initially, it was believed that the universe itself, rather than just the matter within it, had come into existence in the finite past from a condition of non-being. And that notion, as outlandish as it may sound, was a necessary but challenging outcome of general relativity. Einstein's novel theory of gravity introduced in 1915. Our understanding of gravity was irreversibly changed from the predominant Newtonian gravity when Einstein first conceived the general theory of relativity. According to Newton's principles, gravitation imposed a force on every mass in the universe instantly across space, directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. But after making the discovery of special relativity, Einstein and many others realized that there was no such thing as a universally applicable definition of what distance, or even what instantaneously meant, with regard to two separate locations. The notion that observers in various frames of reference would each have their own distinct, equally valid standpoints on what distances between objects were and how the passage of time worked was introduced by Einsteinian relativity. It was only almost immediately after that that the two previously absolute concepts of space and time were woven together into a single fabric, space-time. All objects in the universe flowed through this fabric, and the goal of a new theory of gravity would be to explain how all types of energy, not just masses, shaped this fabric, which supported the entire cosmos. The crucial knowledge regarding the structure of our universe had not yet been discovered, despite the fact that the principles governing how gravitation worked in our universe being proposed in 1915. 
while some scientists at the time supported the idea that many objects in the sky were actually island universes that were situated far outside the Milky Way galaxy, the majority of astronomers at the time believed that the Milky Way galaxy represented the complete expanse of the universe. As a supporter of the latter theory, Einstein incorporated a particular kind of fudge factor called the cosmological constant to his equations since he believed the universe to be a static and eternal one. The reason Einstein made this adjustment, despite the fact that it was mathematically possible to do so, was because without it, the rules of general relativity would guarantee that a universe with equally dispersed matter, as ours appeared to be, would be unstable against gravitational collapse. Actually, it was quite simple to show that any originally uniform distribution of unmoving matter, regardless of shape and size, would unavoidably collapse into a solitary state under the influence of its own gravitational field. Einstein was able to calibrate the cosmological constant by adding this extra component, such that it would push the universe outward in an equal and opposite motion to counteract the pull of gravity. This first account that Einstein and others had made up for themselves would be swiftly altered by two developments, one theoretical and one observational. The equations governing the universe that was homogeneously the same in all places and isotropically the same in all directions, filled with any kind of matter, radiation, or any form of energy were fully developed by Alexander Friedman in 1922. According to his research, such a universe would never be static, not even in the presence of a cosmological constant, and it would always either grow or contract, depending on the details of its initial circumstances. Edwin Hubble was the first to discover in 1923 that the spiral nebulae visible in our skies was not part of the Milky Way, but rather was situated far outside of it, thousands of light years beyond any of the components of our own galaxy. The spirals and ellipticals found across the universe were, in fact, their own island universes, now known as galaxies, and that also, as had previously been noted by Vestos Leifer, the vast majority of them looked to be travelling away from us at very quick velocities. Our data show that the Big Bang accurately and exactly reflects the developments of our universe as we currently understand it, from a hot, dense, nearly uniform early stage. The beginning of time is another matter, though. What about the original notion of a singularity and an arbitrarily hot, dense state from which space and time themselves could have initially surfaced? However, one thing is certain. Whether or not there was a single, ultimate beginning to all that exists, it no longer has anything to do with the hot Big Bang that describes our universe as soon as the end of inflation, with the hot Big Bang happened, the universe expanded to include more matter, radiation and other things, and it started to gravitate, expand and chill, ultimately bringing us to the present. A small number of astronomers, astrophysicists and cosmologists still refer to this supposed origin and emergence of time and space as the Big Bang, but it is no longer a given and has nothing to do with the hot Big Bang that created the universe. Just as our understanding of the universe has evolved, so too has the Big Bang's original definition. It's okay if you're still falling behind, because now is always the greatest time to catch up. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.